Our reading this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, be with us this day. May we hear your word, and may we have the courage to live your word every day of our lives. Amen. This morning in Scripture we read that Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan by none other than John the Baptist. This is a very dramatic scene in the life of our Savior. John was a colorful character and what he was doing caused a stir. John did not want to baptize Jesus. He felt unworthy to even untie his sandals. During Jesus' baptism, the heavens tore open, the Holy Spirit descended, and God spoke and declared how proud he was of his Son. That is a dramatic day of baptism. From what I have been told, my baptism, I laid there like a baby. I didn't even cry, and the big event for us was that my parents hosted a lunch afterwards. On a drama scale compared to Jesus, my baptism isn't even in the ballpark. It's not even in the parking lot next to the ballpark. So why is what John was doing so important? Why was the baptism of Jesus so significant? And how do these things relate to our faith journey? The first thing to notice was the ministry and the mission of John the Baptist. He appeared on the scene announcing a baptism of repentance. This proved to be a very effective ministry as people flocked by the thousands to be baptized. John was a simple, humble, devoted, what you see is what you get type of man. He did not have other interests or needs that got in the way of his relationship to God and what he was doing. He wore a garment woven of camel's hair and a leather belt round his waist. His clothes were out of necessity. He was not dressing for comfort or success. He ate locusts and wild honey. Again, this was food that was used for nourishment, not for pleasure or simply for the joy of eating. John lived out in the desert, probably in isolation. He didn't need relationships and people, for John's devotion was to God. And because of this, he afforded his time and he could devote his life to God. John also had the ability to speak to a person's heart. His message was one that called people to repent. He told people to turn from their ways, to live as God intended, and to prepare for God's chosen to come and be with them. Plain, simple, direct words that went right to a person's conscience. When he called people to repent, he was asking them to take a deep look at themselves and to do what they knew in their heart of hearts to be the right thing. He lived that devoted life and was used by God in a very special and profound way. By calling for repentance, John brought forth people in a way that brought them closer to God, and he prepared people's minds and hearts to be ready for Jesus. John was called by God for a specific purpose. God calls each of us for a specific 
purpose as well. By devoting our lives to God, we are fulfilling that purpose. You may not know this, but your faith and how you live out your faith for God can have a life-changing effect on others. You may never know how much God is using you to change someone's life. And what you need to know is that when God comes first, when we put God first in our lives and everything we do, miracles and wonders and joy take place. Why was the baptism of Jesus so significant? As we begin to address this question, it may be helpful to hear of someone wiser than I. And since I always quote William Barclay, I I don't see a reason to stop in the new year. So here is what Barclay says about Jesus' baptism. The baptism of Jesus presents us with a huge problem. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance meant for those who were sorry for their sins and who wished to express their determination to have done with them. What had such a baptism have to do with Jesus? Was he not the sinless one? And was not such a baptism unnecessary and irrelevant as far as he was concerned? So if the baptism of Jesus was not done for repentance, then what does Jesus' baptism represent? Well, it signifies a moment of decision. For 30 years, Jesus stayed in his hometown. He worked at his craft, he helped out his family, he he waited patiently for that time when his task and his calling came to light. His baptism represented that time, to answer that call, to do what he had to do, to take that step and never look back. With John baptizing and preparing the way, Jesus knew that this was his time of decision and that his challenge had come. And in each of us, there is that moment. There are those moments of decision. Is this the right college for me? Is this the person I'm ready to spend the rest of my life with? Do I move my family across the country for that great opportunity? Is this the career I want to devote my life to? Am I prepared to face and conquer that illness? Can I resist that temptation that will change my life forever? Can I really turn my life around? Can God really use me to serve out his purpose? Jesus, like us, faced those turning points in his life. And we know that we can overcome and triumph those life-changing decisions and moments because our Lord did just that. The baptism of Jesus was also a moment of identification. John had announced the baptism of repentance because he was preparing the way for one who was greater. Even though John was respected and he had a great following and a ministry, he told Jesus that he was unfit to untie his sandals. And during the baptism, the Holy Spirit descended, the heavens tore open, the voice of God was heard. This baptism gave Jesus an identity. All the proof in the world that this was the Messiah, this was the chosen one, this was the Son of God. It was all right there for everyone to see, and Jesus' baptism confirmed that mission and ministry. This is important because in our own baptism, we are marked and identified as belonging to God. Now here's what our Presbyterian Book of Order says about baptism. Grace, repentance, commissioning, baptism enacts and seals what the Word proclaims. God's redeeming grace offered to all people. Baptism is God's gift of grace and also God's God's summons for us to respond to that grace. Baptism calls to repentance, to faithfulness, and to discipleship. Baptism gives the church its identity and commissions the church for ministry in the world. Jesus' Jesus' baptism identified him. We heard God say, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. We are identified in our baptism as belonging to that same Christ. Which means that we are freely given God's love and God's forgiveness and God's grace. And through Christ and the Holy Spirit, it means that we receive God's guidance, God's strength, God's courage, and God's protection. Christ's baptism and John the Baptist's role are important to our journey because they show devotion, they show decision, 
they show identity. And those three characteristics are crucial to our relationship with the living Christ. Now it feels to me like it may be time for a story. There was a young man who was in seminary and he had turned in his first sermon and he was to go to the professor's office to have a meeting to discuss that first sermon and to discuss the grade that was given. So he goes and he sits down and the professor says, I liked your sermon. It was good. It hit scripture. It had a beginning and a middle and an end. And you tied everything together well. And technically, it was very good. He said, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give you a D. And the young man said, well, with all the nice things, why would you give me a D on my first sermon? He said, well, although it's technically very good, it, it lacks conviction. It lacks passion. It lacks compassion. It's just, it's just kind of there. He says, Here, here's an example. Look at the title of your sermon. The title of your sermon says... The theology of Jesus as it relates to the eschatology of Paul. No one in their right mind is going to listen to your sermon. You have turned them off by the very title. A title has to invoke passion. It has to invoke excitement. A title should work like this. If you were driving, if you were riding on a bus and you stopped in front, and there was a church on Fifth Avenue, and you read the title of the sermon, it should be so filled of passion that it would make everybody on that bus get up and run into the church. That's what you need to do. If you can evoke that kind of passion in your sermon, then I think you'll do better than a D. And so the young man argued his point, and he said, you know, with all the good things you say, I still don't get it. So the professor said, I'll tell you what. Go home tonight and, and just change the title. If you can evoke that passion, I'll give, you, I'll give you a better grade. But remember, I'm looking for commitment, I'm looking for excitement, I'm looking for passion. And the way to begin is to get all that right in the title. So the young man goes home, and he works on the title all night long. Doesn't sleep a wink. Comes back the next morning, comes into the professor, and the professor says, well, how'd you do? And the young man says, I, I think I did okay. And he said, is there passion? Is there compassion? Is there excitement? Have, have you captured the word so everyone will run off that bus? And the young man says, I think so. When he puts the paper down on the professor's desk and he picks it up and he reads the title, there is a bomb on your bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's the passion that we need to have for Christ. Not the I'm going to die fear passion, but the I am so excited, I am so moved that things can make me move and run and go in the right directions. That's what Jesus' baptism does for us. That's what John the Baptist's words do for us, his actions do for us. It shows commitment to God first. It shows passion to Christ first. And it makes us get up and be called and moved to action. That's what Jesus' baptism does for us now. That's what the Holy, that's what the other sacrament, the Holy Spirit for us, does to us every time we take it. It moves us to serve. Let us do so with our hearts, now and always. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us this day, so that we may be moved to serve, so that we may help and love those that are in need, now and always. Amen.